Welcome to our live training session here with our RB25 Swap 240SX. We're going to be learning how to tune this vehicle with a Link G4X plug and play system. Let's jump into some details about this vehicle. We're going to find it has an RB25 Swap. Now this RB25 engine is a Neo engine which comes from the R34 Skyline which is going to be unique uh, to the GTS model. Uh, in addition to this, we have a Gretti upgraded intake plenum and a Nissan Q45 throttle body. Now, otherwise, the engine is going to be bone stock internal, so no camshafts, no upgraded forged internals inside of the engine. Now, on the turbo side of things, we have an S366 Borg Warner turbo, a 3-inch turbo back exhaust, a custom equal length manifold, an external wastegate, uh, external vent to the atmosphere, blow off valve, custom charge pipes, and a large front mount intercooler. On the fuel system side of things, we have ID 2000 CC injectors, a radium fuel rail, we have custom feed and return lines with an external adjustable fuel pressure regulator. We also have a radium surge tank with a wall roll 525 liter per hour fuel pump that's been installed. In addition to this, we have a couple other sensors. We have a flex fuel sensor that's installed in the fuel system. We're going to be doing a flex fuel base tune, meaning we're going to be tuning this on 93 octane and then also tuning it with ethanol and we're going to learn how to cross blend and calibrate the fuel spark timing and boost control based on the ethanol content. We also have a fuel pressure sensor and a boost control solenoid. In addition to that, we also have a wide band that's been installed. So we're going to be using all of this in our calibration process, doing things like closed loop fuel control. We're going to be working with uh, closed loop knock control, closed loop boost control, and everything also tied in and based on the flex fuel amount or the ethanol concentration in our fuel system. We have a lot of things to cover. Let's jump in and let's learn how to create our base file so we can upload it to the Link G4X and get the engine fired up and get things going. Welcome to our live training session here with our RB25 swapped S14 240SX. Now we just went over all the details of the vehicle. Let's jump into our Link G4X software to begin creating our base calibration file to start our live training process off. Now the first thing I want to turn our attention to is my laptop screen right now. I have my G4X software open, but I don't have a file loaded yet. This is going to have a plug and play G4X box that's going to be used for this vehicle. So this has the RB25 swap Neo engine that's specific to the R34. This engine has been retrofitted into the car. A wiring specialties R34 harness has been used and therefore because it's all R34 spec we need to run a plug and play box for this application. We could run it on a standalone and do a custom wire and standalone if we wanted to make a custom wire harness but to keep things simple keep things straightforward and plug and play we went through and the owner decided to go through the setup here so that's what we're using. We're going to be running a plug and play R34 GT style box so we need to go and pick the right base map so we can start off with that as the basis for creating everything for this video. Now we're gonna have to go in and uh, account for all the different inputs and outputs specific to the vehicle here. Uh, some, some things, other details like injectors, the fuel system, the sensors, all have to be calibrated right. The base map will not run this particular engine. And unless you have a bone stock R34, for example here, if you have a R34 GT, uh, or GTR, you could run one of the plug and play files from Link. It should fire up the engine, get it running. But in this case, that's not going to work for us. So we need to create, take the file, open it up, and edit everything that's going to be pertinent to account for all the details for this vehicle. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to go up here to File and go to Open. And that's going to take me to my base map directory. This is found in C Drive, Link G4X, PC Link G4X base maps. This will be defaulted when you install your software in this location. So what I need to do here is scroll down in this folder and we're looking for the Nissan specific files and then we're going to be looking for R34 GTT G4X Extreme Plugin. That's what this part number box we're working with is going to be. We want the matching base map to start off with. So we're going to go grab this right here and click open and allow that to open up in the software. So this is the first step here in getting everything going. Now what we're going to do here in this tutorial is focus on just the base map creation, accounting again for all the details specific to the vehicle. We're going to work with the layout here, and the layout that we can see is going to be how everything's arranged on the screen. This layout is available right into our course directory. So in the course directory, it's one of the first things you can click on. It'll show you the Link G4X course packet. You can go ahead and download that. This layout's available in there. It just streamlines the process. And again, it keeps it a little bit easier. You can see what I'm editing on my screen, and you're able to follow along and do the exact same thing on your end when, when you're doing it with your car. So let's go up here, and I'm going to go here to Basics, and we're going to start off in Basics. We're going to work our way through each layout page, 
We might be skipping some pages that aren't pertinent for this particular setup or this vehicle. Things like traction control or gear cut, we're not using on this car. We have standard gearbox in this um, and we don't have wheel speed sensors fitted. So we're not gonna go through in some of those motorsport type features. This is going to be more of kind of a plug and play application. This is what you'd expect probably for 80 to 90% of the cars running on link. They'll be using some form of pro plug-in or a plug-in box here. And we're not gonna have a custom setup going in and doing all the custom configuration with an input output list. We will be taking a look at some race applications uh, further into the live training filming here as I go on in time. I have a couple lined up that we'll be able to take a look at. You'll be able to look at that process using a, a Fury or an Extreme Box. It's going to be a universal and going through and setting up all the input outputs will be essentially starting off from scratch, but this saves us a little bit of time. Plug and play application, plug and play base map. So let's go ahead and edit it and go through all of our windows here, all of our layout windows that are pertinent. Now the basics page here has a lot of details and configurations that we need to account for that are important for getting the engine fired up and running. If we take a look here under configuration, let's move our way down. We're gonna start off here at the top and just kind of work our way down and then also across. So we're gonna go through all of our different parameters here that we need to program. Under configuration, if we take a look at cylinders, there's a six cylinder engine. This is an RB25, that's correct. Engine type is a four stroke engine. Custom TDC, we're leaving that off. We don't need that for an RB engine. Serial poured bow rate, we don't need to change that from the default. The description here, you could go in and give it a, comes out of a custom description, say RB25 Neo. Uh, vehicle VIN, vehicle identification number or VIN number, you could enter that in here. I don't have that off the top of my head, so we're not gonna populate that. Firing order table is found down here below. 153624 is the firing order for an RB25, RB26 engine. So this is correct. We'll leave the firing order here as is. Down below here, we have fuel main. Now this is where we need to account for all the fuel configuration. So if we wanna run it in sequential or batch fire or semi-sequential, we can program that. Now this has a cam and crank sensor on it and therefore we can run it in full sequential operation. So we wanna leave the injection mode here on sequential. The fuel equation mode here gives us some options. Traditional is an injection time-based strategy where the main fuel table doesn't have any specific numbers. We'll want to go in and increase or decrease the numbers to achieve the air fuel or the fueling to the engine as we'd like. The model mode here takes into account things like our engine displacement, the number of cylinders, our air temp reading, our map pressure reading, and it's going to combine everything and figure out then what the estimated air mass is going to be. And then it can figure out from knowing the estimated air mass and the target air fuel we'd like to run the engine at, it can figure out the fuel mass. Based on what we program for the injector data information, it'll convert the requested fuel mass into an injector pulse width to deliver the fuel that we're, we're going after in the target air fuel. It is a relatively circular equation. We've talked about this pretty extensively in the training course. I personally like to tune in modeled mode there is nothing wrong with traditional mode, but I'm gonna go after model mode. Now model multi-fuel is meant for doing tuning on an ethanol-based application. Right now, we will be on pump gas. We are going to tune this on ethanol. It has a flex fuel sensor. I'm not going to work with the model multi-fuel just yet. I'm gonna show you um, as we get in, and go through the calibration process here, we're just gonna focus on 93 octane. Once we get to the point when we can do flex fuel, I'll show you an alternative to using the model multi-fuel and also then working with multi-fuel. So we'll hopefully be able to have enough time here to take a look at working with both and being able to implement the flex fuel control in either mode here. But the way that Link has intended this to work is that you would select model multi-fuel if you're dealing with ethanol-based tuning with a flex fuel sensor. I'm just gonna use model for right now. You can switch it to model multi-fuel after you've already tuned it on model. So that is an option, that's what I'm gonna do here. Let me click okay. Now it's gonna say, do you wanna clear the charge temp approximation table to all zeros and set the axis to the default values? I will say yes, and that's gonna allow me to um, take away uh, the... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel so make sure you subscribe and click here thanks for watching and i'll see you guys later